Every day, millions of Vietnamese enjoy rice noodles in the form of pho, a steaming bowl of beef noodle soup. In the early morning hours, on side streets and street corners, Hanoi's hardworking cooks begin setting up their pho stations. A soup, a meal, a national treasure, pho is a widespread addiction. Many Vietnamese start the day with a steaming bowl of this divine noodle soup. Often mispronounced, but immediately appreciated, pho is pronounced like fur with a soft R. Once the broth is prepared, it takes only seconds to assemble and not much longer to eat. Truly, pho is a fast food that even a dietitian can love. The essence of pho is a beefy consomme flavored with charred onions and ginger, rock sugar and star anise. When a customer places an order, the simmering broth is ladled over rice noodles, along with the diner's choice of thinly sliced beef, meatballs or chicken. Scallions, bean sprouts, chilies and fresh herbs add a burst of fragrance and the layered textures that characterize the best Vietnamese cooking. Whether it's eaten indoors or on the street to the accompanying soundtrack of car honks and scooters, pho perfectly captures the genius of the Vietnamese kitchen. Back from their visit to Vietnam, my farm and Unilever Food Solutions executive chef Steve Gillaba demonstrate the finer points of recreating this invigorating meal in a bowl. Well, I'm very excited about doing this dish because it's my personal favorite, and, and I, I would eat it every day if I could. Um, a couple of things to remember. It's, it takes a while because we're going to simmer the broth, and uh, what we're going to start, you can do this either with beef bones, which is really traditional and much preferred in Vietnam because beef is a, sort of a, a luxury meat, and people love to go out and have pho, but obviously you can also do this with chicken. And uh, we have a pot that's boiling right now, so if you want to go ahead and put the knuckle okay. bones into the water. What, what this process does is that it will clean, clean the, the, uh, the bones first. So you want to blanch the bones. I'll get you some tongs here. And, and we're doing it in boiling water. We're doing it in boiling water. And then we have another pot in the back here ready for you to transfer uh, the bones. So you want to put the bones inside the boiling water and bring it up to a boil again. Okay. Knuckle bones are good. You can also use oxtails. Um, I like to use a combination, but definitely the knuckle bones um, give a really good wonderful, rich, real good flavor, real wonderful uh, richness to it. And, and this really goes back to the classical way to make stock. So mm -hmm. that must come from, mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from. I know there's French influence, but it goes back to classical way of making stock. Uh -huh. I'm going to turn the heat up a little higher because we put a lot of cool bones in there. And a lot of what a lot of people don't don't think about when when you're thinking about pho, and for for that matter, really um, Asian soups. If it's a broth soups in Asian cooking, it's very desirable. And in fact, it's really it's really where it's at. It's in the clarity of the broth. And so the broth should be very flavorful. It should be beefy, but it can't be you know dark. It can't and so be you cloudy. it cannot be cloudy at all. So after a while, when it goes into the big pot where we will make our broth, um, we're going to have to watch the fire. In Vietnam, the families would stay up all night. Right. You don't want to make it let it boil. No. I mean, really, the boil is not a makes, vigorous boil. That's what makes things. It light simmer, light bubbles, and that's right. really what makes mm -hmm. stock cloudy. So, um, so definitely, what you don't want to do with the bones is you do not want to brown it first in the oven and put it in here because that would be uh, creating a very cloudy broth. Uh, the idea is to basically blanch it, clean it, clean cleanse it up, it a cleanse it a little bit up, and uh, remove any kind of scum and debris. Um, you, we will still have to keep an eye on this pot here, and we'll have to skim it off when we see all the foam that comes to the top. On the top, and you just right. keep skimming, and, uh -huh. and that's what makes a clear broth. Here. Right. You can put the meat in here, too. And what I like to do with the meat is, uh, you know, like a chuck roast would be really nice. Um, in Vietnam, we'll use a brisket. And uh, yes, it's a little bit fatty, but you're only wanting the flavor. Much of the fat, any of the fat that you see, we can trim it off or we can skim it off uh, from the soup pot later on. Right, and you, got the, you want little 
tiny bubbles of fat, if I remember. Sometimes yeah, it's just little, a little bit. Little, uh -huh. little, 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 like fish eyes, just a few little things that kind of deliver a little bit of flavor. Right, because you have to remember that this is a meal in itself. It's a, it's a meal in a bowl, and so this is, this is all you're eating, this is all the meat you're eating, and this is all the fat that you're going to consume for this particular uh, meal. And it ends up a small amount of meat. A very small amount when you think about it. Okay, so um, that's boiling, so you go ahead and uh, I'll fish help you uh, fish this down and transfer it over here. And so it's not a particularly difficult dish to make, Steve, but um, there are a lot of little nuance, nuances to it that you have to uh, pay attention to. Uh, should simmer for about So now that we have the bones in the broth, right, we're going to get ready and char some ginger. Um, some onions and some shallots. And shallots because they're much more intense than onions and onions are nice because they, they give a, they, they really sweeten the broth, they're really nice. And this process you just basically uh, char them. You could just uh, char this right directly over the fire. To leave this so it's very here. quick. Very quick, very hot. Let's just leave it over here. And of course, you can also use a screen if you're doing a larger mm -hmm. quantity. Maybe that's uh, the, what uh, would be nice. And we just basically char them. And the idea is not to cook through; is just to create a little smoky flavor right at you know on the surface. Surface of it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, flavor right on the the ginger skin. A lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits. The the the, the most intense flavor is right within the skin. Right within the skin. First layer, right. Yes. Said. Exactly. So that's what basically we're trying to do here. Um, turn this. This is this is what you're looking for okay. because it's, remember it's going to cook for about four minutes. Okay. So that's that piece is good. I'm going to go. Um, I like lots of ginger. Lay it right there. And I'll do a little bit more of this um, shallots here. This is all you're looking for. Not to be cooking it too long. You know, this is a really nice color. Yeah, just having, a yeah. little bit of caramelization, get some of that right. sweetness out of that. And, and, and with, with this, and it's sort of the essence of Vietnamese cuisine too, you want nuances, you want nice aromas, you want layers of, of, of different fragrances. Not so intense. If you were to burn this, uh, char this, and it's all black, it might be too smoky and therefore so um, interfere. And right, and interfere with the, the nice flavors, subtle right. flavor. And, and it was that. a blend of flavors, or kind of a symphony of flavors, uh -huh. but they really blended very okay. well in your mouth. I'm going to reduce this, and before we turn that back, you want to uh, roast. Well, okay, so we, we got this, we're going to add it to the soup. Okay, now we are going to uh, roast. Uh, the, the spices. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because this fire is really hot. Okay. And you want to be able just to feel the heat a little bit, but not uh, not more than that because it could scorch very easily so, and yeah, turn it really bitter. Again, bitter. So you got your, okay. your star anise, your your cinnamon. Cardamom, yes. Fennel. Fennel. Right? And coriander, coriander. seeds and some cloves. So you see some cloves oh, yeah. here, right? And the essence of Vietnamese pho is really in this flavor in star anise, you, you definitely can, can uh, detect that. And in the background, you'll, you'll be able to taste the, the wonderful, subtle notes of coriander seeds, um, a little bit of Vietnamese cinnamon. This mm -hmm. cinnamon, I don't know so if you... And, and we have a regular cinnamon here, yeah, so you see the... It's, oh, good, we can compare that. And you could use this, and if you were using this kind of cinnamon, I would use less, just a very little. This is much sweeter. Has a higher oil content. Can you? It's very it's not, aromatic, right? It's very sweet. Yeah, no, it and is it's very not, sweet. This is very strong cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So usually when I use that, I would, I would uh, decrease the amount. And uh, I can feel that it's getting a little warm. Sometimes people don't know when. If you start seeing smoke, it's really too hot. Well, do you look for a tiny bit of a haze to come out of it? Just I mean, barely. Just barely yeah, to come yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, I that's can smell now. Yeah. You can smell it now. So um, if you want, uh, we can put this in. And I have a little spoon over here. So you can try to gather them up and put it in so the So are we going to use all this? Yes, we are. For the one pot? Yes. That's pretty amazing. It looks like a lot, but it's really not, mm -hmm. really. Well, you know, I've, I've been experimenting a little bit and trying to, to make it, but I didn't use as much okay. spice at all. So uh -huh. now I'm 
that's what the great lesson is all about. Okay, great. Um, you do want to be careful that um, actually the, the, the star atoms sometimes can be very overpowering. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like it on the kind of on the hard spice side. Um, in in northern uh, part, uh, where in Hanoi, where the dish originated, people love to have their pho very subtle. Do you remember uh -huh. that when we were in Hanoi? in that alley right. where the family was making. It was mostly a beef broth, right? And then I think that you said that you probably prefer the one in Saigon, yes. the one that we went to, which mm -hmm. has more, um, more, more spice, more to, spice it. to it. Yeah, and here you go. And you know, the, you, you could use this bag. It's easy because you can fish the whole thing yeah, out or so you can like just dump the whole thing and then strain it later on. So we can do okay. that. And actually, why don't we dump this into the pot? You want to go this yeah. one? Yeah, right. So why why throw anything? it away? Yep. No, you can go ahead and add this right now. Okay. You have the whole thing. Here you go. Because my tongues. It's okay because it's going to cook, so uh -huh. it's okay if I use my hands there a little. Right. And you know that um, I would probably not put the spice bag in. You can put this in. Mm -hmm. Not the spice bag in for four hours. I like my spices in only for about two hours. It's sort of a personal preference, but mm -hmm. I feel that when you put the spices in and it cooks for a certain amount of time, it starts to dissipate. And, and the flavor will still be there, but it's not as vibrant. It's more more homogeneous. It's like blended mm -hmm. kind of so uh, do flavor. So do you believe in, in your philosophy, and, and maybe not, this is maybe your overall philosophy, that you kind of layer some spices in there sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think one of the, different levels. Right, one of the wonderful things about Southeast Asian cuisine and Vietnamese cuisine in particular is that it's very flavorful, but yet it's not pungent. And you do that by cooking cooking spices a certain way and don't don't put it in too much don't cook it too long they all become kind of a little bit overpowering sometimes mm -hmm. a little bit too pungent a little bit too much homogeneous it all tastes kind of blended whereas in Vietnamese cuisine we kind of like you want yeah, spikes you want like, and, a, and like a, spikes is maybe a bad word but you want different levels different levels right, right? yeah but it is kind of spiking little different things in uh -huh. your mouth and yeah yeah exactly so we're going to let this cook and it'll start to boil and when it boils what we we'll want to do is just keep skimming so in Vietnam people love to the family would stay up all night and they take turns watching it and what you don't want to do is you don't want ever to for example traditionally it's made over a wood fire and sometimes it just sparks and starts burning. Oh, you're, you're, and so, yeah. right. And so we, the people always, the pho cooks are always watching the fire for that reason because they don't want it to boil because that spoil the whole pot and it will spoil the whole day's work for them. So we're going to let that cook for about two hours. Okay. And then later on, we're going to add uh, the, the spices in there. Okay. okay. So I'll get a little bit of scum off the top of there. Right, yeah. So you see it will continue to... Um, to simmer, and then as it simmers, uh, you smell this wonderful uh, yeah, aroma. Yeah, the aroma is starting to come out right. there. You're getting that beef aroma uh -huh. now. Yeah, but you're also getting some, some, um, the, some the impurities um, out, and so you want to make sure that we uh, skim that off. And um, this is really uh, the important moment in pho cooking and, and something that, uh, you know, pho cooks in Vietnam pay a lot of attention to, and that is the way that this is probably a little, a little bit even, too high, right? it, even a little too high. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit, and you want it to bubble. You don't want it to boil. That's probably the right amount, okay? At this point, you want to go ahead and put the spices the spice that, you roasted, sure that you roasted earlier, right? So that goes in. And um, you can put this in until the, at the very end, but like I said, I like it kind of like at about two hours. And so if you were to cook this pot for eight hours, you would put the spice in in the last two hours. Um, that's sort of a personal preference. You could probably go up to three. three hours. And some people like it at four. Um, I, I don't know. I, my palate is such that I like to be able to discern all the different flavors in there, the coriander, the mm -hmm. cumin, and, and the... Um, this uh, cinnamon. Um, at this point, we're going to put some fish sauce in there. And you notice is that the brand that we're using is a Vietnamese brand. And the Vietnamese style is much lighter. Much clearer. The, yeah. Much clearer. And the Thai is more intense. And for this particular dish, it likes a very delicate flavor. So we'll put some fish sauce in at this moment. We're, gonna, we're not going to season it totally because it's still got a ways to go. Mm -hmm. But this um, gives it uh, some body mm -hmm. right now. And you want to add a little bit of sugar. And while you do a little sugar, I'm going to put a little salt in there. Okay. Good. You already want me to go a little more? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And we'll check on. Yeah. And then we're just going to let this go for a little while. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start our pot. Let's say if this is ready, then you need to get your bowls ready to assemble it. 
So <clears throat> in a in a college university setting where you have a bit, maybe cooking exhibition style, mm -hmm. um, you take the pot that's a, the broth that's already made out there, keep it on a low, low well roil, heat. and then you have another pot with um, rolling boiling, you know, really vigorous boil. This, that's where you're going to dunk your noodles. Your, your noodles. So let's go on to that step. Okay, great. This is coming along really beautifully. Uh, our water is uh, boiling away there. We have uh, rice noodles. Uh, if you're using dried rice noodles, uh, such as this one in the bag, what uh, what you can do to here, expedite right? it. Yeah, that's you, you see here it says size medium or large here. Mm -hmm. Actually, it says large. That's large if you look kind of like a wider um, noodle, linguine style noodle. I probably like this uh, a little bit smaller, you know. And uh, here we've soaked it in water for uh, at least 30 minutes. And so what that does is that helps uh, to cook it a little bit faster and take some of that excess starch and, out. And it goes very quickly. And I remember over there it was only fresh noodles. It was Yeah, everything is, is, everything is fresh there. So um, go ahead and just, uh, yeah, uh, put a little. Now the proportion is very important. You want to have one portion of noodles to four parts water. So okay. you want the bowl to be kind of filled to the, to the rim almost with liquid. So. Um, that's probably good for this bowl. Yes, it's probably enough. Uh, no more than that. Okay. Go ahead and put the, a little bit of bean sprouts in. We do this at the restaurant. You don't have to do this. In okay. Vietnam, they don't do it. They just do it raw and they put the broth. Yeah, up. we kind of. I do it at the restaurant because I kind of like my noodles to sit a little bit higher, mm -hmm. and so that when I put the meat on top, it shows off really well. Okay. Okay. So now here's a, a trick that we always say. You, you really need this, Steve. You have to kind of stir it around, and what you want to do is basically washing. The noodles cooking and washing and rinsing, right? Um, at the restaurant, at the Lemongrass restaurant, when we do this, we're, we're at one of the things that I'm really a fanatic about is to make sure that you really rinse it well. Otherwise, it'll dilute the flavor of the broth, and you want it to be in in the you know you don't want to do it too quickly because you you want to completely cook off mm -hmm. all the excess starch. So when you bring it up, make sure you do it like the like the way we do it in Vietnam, that is just bang on the sides. So make sure that. All the excess water, uh, it's kind of like cooking pasta. If you, you still have it? water in the pasta, the sauce is not going to be that great, right? Okay. You transfer that to a bowl, right? It's very important that the bowl is, is hot or preheated. In Vietnam, we, we kind of like pull the basket, put it in the bowl. Remember how they right. did that? And they pour it back pour in. Pour it back okay. in. Okay. So you got your nice um, noodles in here, okay? So um, you want to, do you want raw beef or cooked beef? You probably want some cooked beef. You probably want both. So, I think a little you bit of both. You probably want combination. Yes. Okay, go ahead and uh, slide. And, and that's what we had. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. So this is the beef that we cooked in this uh, stock earlier, right? Uh, so you can slices. use like a chuck. Yeah, very small amount. Uh, some onions. I kind of like a lot of onions. And, and here it's very important that they're no, cut no thicker than this. They have to be paper thin, right? You want uh, a nice sweet onion if you get Right, right here. I, I kind of like a lot of green onions. It, it looks like excessive amount, but it really isn't. Um, we'll go ahead and put the meat in here. Okay, do you like some raw beef too? A little bit. Okay, a little bit. Okay, so then we'll do that. And when we have pour, both, right? Right, when we pour boiling broth on it, it's going to um, cook the meat um, instantly, right? So we got the, so right in that pot there. The, right over here. And also I noticed when we're over there too, sometimes they, they put the raw beef in the little ladle and just yes, stirred it, yes. stirred it real quick. Actually, then, yeah, because they want to make sure that, you know, over there also, because the beef is not as nice as mm -hmm. this one that we can get, the beef over there is kind of a little tough, and they want to make sure that it it's kind of somewhat cooked, cooked. otherwise grizzly, that's not well done. And I know you well said done. in your restaurant you actually use... Uh, we use the New York strip. New York strip, yeah, yeah, which, so. is, which this is. And basically, yes, this is how you do it traditionally, right? So you help cook it a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And, and actually, and then what you do is you, you want to make sure that this, this customer gets the real sweet um, meat broth. broth. Right, so here we go. And usually when you do this, you want to make sure you don't get any fat in the broth, okay? And, and usually when I pour it in, I like to pour the sides. I don't like to pour it on top because I like all the meat to stay in one side. So this is how it's uh, typically served, right? You can do a little bit of black pepper. This is how they do it in Vietnam. You want to go ahead and... Um, Traditionally in Vietnam, it's served with some hoisin sauce mm -hmm. and sriracha. some chili sauce, sriracha yeah. sauce. So you can put that in here. A little warning. This is a personal thing. I don't really like this very much in my soup because I like, you see how, no, how, clean, it, you know, clean. how clean, right? 
How clean that's going to be, you know. It's I very think clean, mask and it. I kind of <laughs> right. I kind of like it like that with just a little bit of a squeeze of lime, just not a whole lot. Be very careful. A little bit of that, and you, of course, to eat, you would shred, you know, all the fresh herbs in here, right, with your hands. And by the time you're done prepping, oh yeah, put some of that salt leaf. Salt leaf in it. Yeah, salt leaf herb in there. And I'm kind of ready to dig in because my hands smell really good, right? And I'm going to get you a little spoon. Okay, so just yeah. push it down here. This is a clean spoon. So, go well, ahead and taste great. it. Yeah, I'm going to taste that with you too. And if I want a little heat, I could use a little bit oh, of chili. Oh, actually, chilies. I do like a heat. I know do you, you like heat? I, I know you like a little, you actually like a little more heat than I like. Should yeah, I, I put like, a little bit in? A little bit. Of. Okay, yeah. There you go. So when I start turning red, then you know I yeah. have... I uh, watch well, just put three rings no, in there. That's, so. Yeah, that's probably my speed there. Is that nice? It, it's really, I mean, just nice and smooth. You're getting the herbs, the green onions, the l light beef notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the yeah. sp warm, the warmth of the spices. Right, and the whole idea is when you serve such a big bowl, we probably you know could put a little bit more broth in here, but it comes so hot that you'll get all this steam, and the steam sort of rises and embraces your face, and then your fingers smell all this wonderful fresh herbs. And that's the, the true pho experience, and I think that if you serve it that way, um, you, you're giving your customers the full experience. So very important, everything is, is done very thin. Broth is very hot, clear. Uh, serve it in a bowl, uh, a big bowl, so you can keep the heat in there. Uh, lots of fresh herbs if you can get it, but if you, let's say if you can't get the saw leaf herb, try to get at least the, the, um, the Asian basil. The Asian basil. But you know, I've been in places where you can't, uh, sometimes in the winter when it's a little bit mm -hmm. hard to get Asian basil, it's very delicious with cilantro and all and the other condiments. Herbs. Yeah. Sure. Remember, remember, though, that in, in Vietnam, in, in Hanoi, where this dish originated, people there are very much into what a bowl of pho is supposed to taste like. And even though there are lots of fresh herbs in Vietnam, they didn't, the people they, in the north... They didn't use them, though. No, they didn't use because they don't want, because they think herbs mask the flavor of this wonderful Of the richness beef. of the beef that they... That's, yes. uh, you know, it's a sought-after piece of meat there yeah. for them. You remember that one yeah. place that we went and you know, they didn't have any herbs? And, um, but in the South, the difference is in, 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 in the South is that uh, people love their pho. It's a regional difference. People love their pho with fresh herbs, lots of fresh herbs. And in the southern part of Vietnam is where, where you will find such an abundant amount served oh. at the table, such as this. You won't find this kind of amount served in the central part not as much, and as you go further north, it would be less and less. Less and less and less. Yeah, because people really like the pure taste. And actually less spice as you go up. Right, and it's also because of the Chinese influence is much more prevalent in the north. It, it borders, you know, China, and we have a lot of steamed food, uh, sort of stir-fry foods, and things that are probably uh, more similar to southern Chinese cooking, mm -hmm. like Cantonese cooking, like Hong Kong style. Uh, the Cantonese cooking that is so uh, popular in this country. But um, uh, what a great yes. great dish, right? And as you can see, not terribly difficult to make, but you kind of have to pay attention to all these little details that make a real big difference. And you also told me that you could do it with chicken. That's well, right. We have some and actually, you know, there, there is such a thing as a combination, and in this country, customers love combination toppings and combination soup and salad. But you can also put some fresh chicken in there, if you like. You can also do this with tofu. You can make a nice vegetable broth. Mm -hmm. and if with you, that same warming spices and so on. Right, if you, do, if, you, if you char the onions, char the ginger, uh, make a broth similar to what we did, but do with a vegetable stock, you'll, you'll get a beautiful um, pho too, um, especially if you serve it with some um, mushrooms, like shiitake mushroom, to give it a little body, and some right, tofu, some flavor, like right. seared tofu, but great. Fantastic. Great.